Hey, everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Harrison Goodman. I'm the content executive here at Higher Things. And we have a brand new guest today. This is Mark Jasa. I'm really, really excited to introduce him to you. Mark, how are you today? Doing great. Good to, good to be here. Fantastic. So Mark is an evangelist. He is an apologist. He is a, a witness to Christ who has risen from the grave. Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I, I guess when I was in my undergrad, I was an agnostic and uh, someone from another church came and convinced me God existed. But the thing I noticed was that we didn't really have Lutherans um, speaking clearly what Jesus had already done for me, at least not speaking it without uh, qualifying it by, oh, and here's what you got to do. So, um, when I finally heard how outrageous the good news was, I, uh, Bill Swirla, who I'm sure you know. Uh, oh, yeah, we love Bill. I, I, I went to his church and he told me that the good news was outrageous forgiveness for undeserving sinners. And as soon as I heard him say that, like at that moment, something went off in my mind. I said, that's what I want to do with the rest of my life. And so since I wasn't hearing this message on campuses, I wanted to take this message to the atheists, the Muslims, the Buddhists, the Jehovah's Witnesses. And, and I do like telling all those people their sins are forgiven. And I like hearing their, their you know, uh, their responses. Um, what, one thing that this outrageous news does, well, like a a homeless guy came up to me on campus and he's like, what are you doing? I said, you know, I'm evangelizing the students. And in the middle of our conversation, I looked him in the eyes and I said, your sins are forgiven. And he said, I don't need my sins forgiven. I said, too late. <laughs> Jesus already paid for them. It's already done. Then the guy starts crying. And he says, no one has ever said it to me that way before. And and that's how I felt, too, before I heard it from Swirla. Uh, Bill he Swirla, thought there was going to be a hook. He thought there was going to be a now, this is what you have to do for it. Where's the second shoe? Right. Huh. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, okay, now what do I got to do, right? Yeah, okay, fine. Jesus paid for my sins. Now what do I have to do? It's like, no. Right. No. How much does that cost? It's, yep, yep. Huh. So this is this is not only precious to everybody because this is what our Lord has given us to to do and share. But um, I was brought dragged kicking and screaming into faith in college through campus ministry. Oh, um, it, 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 by what? Through campus ministry, I, I, oh, I okay. my soul to okay. what was done there. Thanks be to God. Okay. Um, yeah. But I, I also recognize as important as it is to me, um, as somebody who has literally had the faith shared with me on a college campus, uh, it's scary to talk about. How do you kind of work up the courage to talk to somebody about something this this outrageous and different? Okay, so I, I think there are different kinds of evangelism. You have invasive, intentional. Invasive, mm -hmm. intentional would be like, when Jehovah's Witnesses come to your door and knock at your door, that's super intentional, but it's also yeah. super invasive and like high anxiety. Then you have uninvasive, uninintentional is like uh, when Lutherans just like, okay, Jesus, put someone in my life. Jesus, I'm waiting. Okay, come on. Okay, Jesus, what are you doing? So it's like you've got this, I'm just waiting around for, for Jesus to put someone in my life. So you've got invasive and intentional and you've got uninvasive uninventional and i have a new thing that's uninvasive intentional so i have a box it says religion is for the weak and when people see my box they come to me and so this this takes you were talking about the the anxiety or the the fear away well what helps to take the fear away is that this person is all ready for a conversation they want to talk to you they want to talk about it right and so um, it, and it gives me a chance to talk about death with this person because I'll say, okay, well, what are the weaknesses? Religion is for the weak. Well, what's the, what are the weaknesses that cause us to, to look to religion? And I would say the number one reason is death. Death is coming for me. It's coming for you. What are we going to, uh, death is a greater problem than I have the power to deal with. 
Right. And, and so here, when somebody actually wants to have the conversation with you, that makes it different. So I guess that was going to be where I wanted to go next is, you know, how do you how do you talk to strangers versus friends? But like you said, to actually invite somebody else into the conversation, it helps. Yeah. OK, so a girl came up to me and she's like, how is it that I can talk to you? She's like, I'm an atheist and I've talked to you and and everything's just fine and we're relaxed. But my dad can't talk to me about this. And I said, your dad cannot bear the the pain of knowing his precious little girl does not believe in Jesus. And that's why it's so hard for you to have this conversation. I said, look, it's not that I don't care about you. I do. I'm here to talk to you, but I'm not emotionally invested in you. You know, so so she and I had this really great conversation. uh, And I said, so something else that I want to say to you all is that having these conversations with someone you don't know prepares you to have the conversations with the people you do know. So the people you are emotionally invested in, you can calmly, you, you've already had these conversations, you already know what the questions are, you already know what the answers are, so all you're doing is gently, calmly working through this stuff. That's fantastic. And, you're right, the, the people we want to have the conversations the most with are, are the ones that are, well, the dearest to us, it's where the anxiety even gets higher. Right, and something else that I wanted to say was that you, um, You can't win these arguments. Uh, it's, they're unwinnable. So, so you've got to know that from the very start. For instance, if I say death is scary, you can say, no, it's not. And the, the conversation's done. Sure. Uh, there's nothing else I can do. But if, if you say, yes, yes, uh, death is scary, then I, I can, like a, an atheist girl came up to me and she said, I'm an atheist, but I'm afraid of death. I said, don't worry about death. Jesus is your savior. And so immediately she recognized that as good news. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is this is a, a, an important thing. So how do we know the answers to the questions? Um, like, I, I know it's, it's maybe a softball question, but where do we learn this stuff so that we can share it with others? Okay, so the big thing that I, I think is important is getting my, my, my two goals. Am I jumping ahead? No, go for it. So my two goals, my first goal is to get the person to think about his death. This, But my ultimate goal for the conversation is that I would have the chance to say, you, your sins are forgiven. Jesus has paid for your sins. You can die now. It's okay. Because Jesus will rescue you from death. He promises. So these are promises of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. And one of the Bible verses I use is um, in uh, Luke 23, where the, the man says to the man on the cross, the criminal says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus' response is, truly, I say to you, Today, you will be with me in paradise. And so I'll ask people, so is his promise to you any less certain than his promise to that guy? No. And then and uh, when, when people are uh, kind of not sure about what the gospel is, I'll take both Catholics and Protestants through John 1.29. Uh, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. world. And, and I'll ask them, okay, so um, who did Jesus die for? And that's easy, okay, the world. So, so I'll point at all the people passing by and I'll say, okay, so which one of those people did Jesus forget to die for? And they'll say, no one. Mm-hmm. So then I'll say, okay, so how many sins did he pay for? All of them. And then, and then the next thing is, I'll say, okay, so which one of your sins, which one did Jesus forget to pay for? And then I'll say, none. So, so then I'll say, okay, so, so when you stand before God on judgment day, can the devil himself accuse you of anything? No. Those belong no. to Jesus. So. That's fantastic. I just have them use scripture and, and apply it to themselves. That's what I I get people to do. 
That's fantastic. And, and it's the for you that actually makes the gospel um, that, that Jesus died oh. is anybody has, has died that Jesus is risen is still it's an impressive thing. But what does it do for me that that Jesus death and resurrection for you forgives your sins. And this gets back to the beginning of, of what I didn't have when I was in college. We, we used to sing songs about God is really, really, really big. And God is really, really, really strong. And God is really, really, but is he really powerful for me? You know, right. that wasn't in any of the songs. So all the praise songs did not have the for you in there. They just talked about how big and great and loving God was. And yes, but is, does he love me? You know? Right. And, and there you actually get to all of the reasons we find ourselves to be unlovable. And and this is your message that all of those reasons that your your sins are forgiven. This right, is, right. This is it. That's fantastic. Well, Mark is a, an evangelist. He's an apologist. He, he talks to people about Jesus. And thanks be to God for all that you're doing. Um, is there anywhere that people could find a little bit more about what you're doing? So I'm I'm at I'm on I'm at 1517 um so at 1517.org um uh also um yeah if anyone has questions uh you can email me at markjasa at gmail.com um if anyone's you know searching for me you're free to give the give them my phone number even if if you want um this is a bold if, bold statement <laughs> and you know you can you can find me um I, I've got videos up on 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 YouTube. I've got three videos. If you just look up Mark Jasa on YouTube, I've got three videos up. Well, I can put more up too. But awesome. Uh, well, I encourage you guys to check it out. Thank you, Mark, so much for joining us today on the Drive to School. It's great to have you. Great. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. Bye.